one. Good afternoon in the latest episode of The Big Show. We dedicate an entire episode to David E. Talbert's holiday musical, Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. Show correspondent Wilson Morales will sit down with both Felicia Rashad and the director, David E. Talbert, to discuss the latest holiday classic. Plus, Morales will also recap the week in entertainment, and we'll have all that and more on episode 426 of Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. Let's go. All right, and welcome to the latest episode of Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. I am Tim Gordon, joined by Charles Kirkland. Charles, what's going on, brother? Hey, what's happening, Tim? I'm doing all right. Man, this is a big, big day, man. Um, you know, we got reviews. Of course, we're talking about Jingle Jangle, uh, Christmas Journey, which is uh, Netflix's latest holiday film. I'm going to dedicate an entire episode because I love this movie. Uh, my review is already up on uh, our Film Gordon YouTube site as well as on our Facebook page. I'm sorry, not our Facebook page, our website. Charles Kirkland's review will be up a little later on today for it as well. Um, and then also uh, Big Saturday because uh, <laughs> currently as we speak, <laughs> HB, I mean, I keep saying HBO, Netflix is uh, giving all the critics access to Giving Voice, the documentary uh, saluting August Wilson and his monologue competition. Uh, ahead of the special screening tonight they're doing of Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is the final film from Chadwick Boseman. So it's been a highly emotional afternoon because, you know, I, don't, I can't speak for Charles, but I am one of the few people who can honestly say that I've seen all 10 of August Wilson's cycle series, you know, his, all his films every decade. Um, yes. And I was lucky, man, because... <laughs> when they were showing them here in D.C. on the stage, either the Woolly Mammoth, um, the Swords Theater, or the Kennedy Center. I saw all 10 of them. Jim of the Ocean, Jitney, My Rainey's Black Bottom, Joe Turner's Come and Gone, Fences, et cetera, et cetera. I've seen them all. So it's amazing to, to watch that, you know, Denzel Washington, Viola Davis, of course, with Fences. Of course, Denzel is producing My Rainey's Black Bottom. So he's dedicated, Charles, to bringing all these, these plays by, I'm not going to call him the greatest playwright, American playwright. He might, he's one of the best. August Wilson is a beast. <laughs> August I, Wilson I, is a beast. Are you saying the best American or African American? Well, because, I don't know, you know man. I, I mean, they kept debate. saying he's the greatest American playwright, and he very well may be. Um, I always leave the possibility that there could be somebody else, but August Wilson is somebody whose work I really, really appreciate, man. I mean, his plays are, are simply amazing. And if you have never had the experience of seeing his plays on, in the theater, you missing something amazing. I've never seen uh, but one. I've seen Fences on stage, right. but I haven't seen any of the others. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to Ma Rainey's tonight as well. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it'll be a good outing for Chadwick in his last outing. Um, but we're also going to talk about another playwright, David E. Talbert, today as well as we talk about Jingle Jangle. So yeah, man, David. I'm not e. saying he's the same as August Wilson. <laughs> no, no, he's not. And, and, and David would tell you that he is not. But uh, yeah, man. So, so let's kick off our jingle. This is a special episode, Salute and Jingle Jangle. Uh, so we got a lot to talk about. Uh, so let's kick it off. We're going to bring my brother, Wilson Morales in. Um, what did I do with Wilson? Oh, there he is. Uh, Wilson, who had an opportunity to see it as Sunday. So he will tell you in a moment. Wilson Morales from BlackFilmandTV.com. I mean, is it .com? BlackFilmandTV. I always mess this up, man. I'm trying to yeah. get accustomed to, to Wilson and, you know, because you can't be just switching stuff up on a brother, man. You know, I know you and have known you for two decades doing a certain thing. All of a sudden, I'm like, how do I say Wilson Black Film and TV? Correct, sir? 
Uh oh, we're I'm good. Frozen. Time is up. Yes. <laughs> oh, there I'm he is. Put a sign up for him to look at, so hey, that he man. can always get it right. <laughs> so what's going on, brother? We talking jingle jangle today, man. And I told the folks at the top of the show that uh, you had an opportunity to sit down with both uh, Felicia Rashad as well as David E. Talbot, which we will play a little later on in today's show. Um, but how are you doing, Wilson? Good. You know, uh, uh, it's that time period now. We're getting deep into it towards the end of the year where a lot of Oscar contenders are coming out. But at the same time, it's holiday season. So we're seeing a lot of uh, holiday movies. You know, it's not Lifetime. It's, it's not, uh, 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 you know, um, Hallmark. It's Netflix. Just as you mentioned, Jingle Jangle Christmas Journey is out. You know, it's, you know, there are very few spectacular holiday movies that look good. You know, most of the time it's just a story and a cast that sells you to go in. But when you look at this movie, and what Netflix gave to David E. Talbot, the director and writer, they basically said, don't worry about the budget, just create your vision, you know, because uh, for a playwright like him, who's done theaters for years and then has been transitioning and doing films for a number of years, you know, he got spoiled. He got spoiled with everything that Netflix gave him to be, like the costumes, the music, you know, this, this made it feel like, not a stage setting, but putting it on screen. And, uh, you know, it's a good story. You know, you got Forrest Whitaker and Felicia Rashad, you know, your elder statesman. You know, you got a young kid like Madeline Mills, who we'll hopefully see in more and more films. You know, you've got Keegan-Michael Key continue to make us laugh and, you know, and everybody else around there, you know. So it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful story that, that people will like. Considering that we're still going through uh, COVID, um, considering we're still going through COVID and, uh, um, and, uh, uh, you know, theaters are, are pretty much, you know, um, theater, theaters are pretty much uh, are quiet at this point right now. It's good that people can see it on Netflix. Well, I agree with you, man. It's um, great that people can see it on Netflix. Oh, absolutely. I, I agree because I remember watching it the first time and I was like, I mean, you know, it's funny because, you know, we had the benefit a lot of times as press that we get access to, you know, they'll send kits and notes and special videos. So I saw David E. Talbert's introduction, Wilson. I'm sure you saw it as well. I'm not sure if Charles had the app, you know, had access to it. Okay. Where, yeah. he des where he described what, what the, the vision behind what he did. He wrote this screenplay like 20 years ago um, and kind of put it in a drawer and put it away. And he went to kind of expose his son to kind of like holiday film that he showed him, Willy Wonka and, and several other films. And like his son was like, yeah, they're cute, but I don't really see people who look like me. So right. he went and pulled, the, he pulled his screenplay out, sold, talked to Netflix. And the next thing you know, we got like this amazing original story that I thought was absolutely fantastic. And Wilson talked about Madeline Mills that young girl has such a future, man. You know, when people talk about the it factor, that you either have it or you don't, Madeline Mills has it. Uh, it. You know, in the last few weeks, you know, we've seen an array of talented young kids, some Jazeera Bruto in uh, Witches, Madeline Mills in this film, uh, kid whose name I can't pronounce in the life ahead who plays opposite the legendary Sophia Loren. You know, yeah. you got the kids who play opposite right. David Oyelowo who come away. You know, people don't somewhat, I wouldn't say dismiss them, but they don't think of them as much. But these are the, these are the, the young future, you know, who are getting, you know, and people don't realize the amount of pressure as it is for any actor, you know, when you're lead and you have that many sides to read on, a, you know, on a script. But, you know, when you're a young kid, imagine that pressure, keeping the mental toughness of staying on course, you know, and, and carrying out, especially when you're a kid like Madeline, you're, off, you're acting opposite for us, and you're pretty much the main crux of the story, you know? So there, there's a lot that's there that, that works, you know? It's, it's holiday season, you know? Like, people want to see, you know, and there's a gazillion holiday films on, on TV. Right. You know, so. some of them are like, sappy but some of hey you know at the end of the day during this pandemic you want something cheerful 
You know, you, you kind of know where the story is going to go. You just want to see how the execution is to your liking, you know, and, and, it, and if you get dense some, it's a blessing. Right. So in this film, it has beautiful costumes. I know Wilson, uh, we'll play it a little later on, just kept talking about the costumes with, with Felicia Rashad. Um, it, the, the, you had seven original songs and they include one by John Legend, which I think comes at a very crucial part in the film. And I always mm. tell you guys, whenever you're doing a musical, it's song, song, song. Like you give me a story, but you gotta have some good songs. This film had really, really good songs. Charles, what did you think about the song book for Jingle Jangle? The excellent thing about the song book was that it did not, didn't stick to just one genre. I did enjoy that there was stuff from reggae, there was stuff from all over the place in this film that just gave you a, a taste of the wide diaspora of American African-American music. So, I mean, from R&B to, I mean, it, it was beautiful. I, I, I really enjoyed the music. And, and people said, oh, Forrest Whitaker can sing. I said, yeah, he's done lots of things where he's sung in, in the past. So, you know, it was, it was shocking to some people to hear him sing. But he is an incredible voice. I mean, everyone in this film, it's, it's just magical. I, I can't say enough about the music and the costumes and just the elegance of everyone in the film. It's just outstanding to me. Well, Wilson, I got to give Wilson credit because I keep forgetting that while Wilson is a playwright, I mean, as a uh, film critic, Wilson also spends a lot of time on Broadway watching plays. And the fact that you were able to reference Blue for Felicia Rashad, I was like, <laughs> all right, Wilson, I see you. Because I, I saw Blue down here in D.C., so that's why I was like, hmm, okay. Yeah. Somebody's been doing their homework. <laughs> that's just right. You know what? It's not homework. It's, it's, just, it's experience, you know, being in New York and, and, you know, being able to go see Broadway and, and to see, you know, I remember when I saw that and it was Charles Randolph Wright yeah. who directed it, you right. know? Um, and it's, a, you know, I think they were trying to bring it back. But obviously, the pandemic has paused everything, right. you know, but uh, Felicia was just a delight to talk to. You know, it's my third time talking to her in within two months. You know, I just recently talked to her again briefly, uh, along with um, Tina Fey and Angela Bassett for her next film, So. So she's been working. Even when you go back to January when she did the Tyler Perry movie, she's just changing her whole game. She's like, listen, I've she's played demand, the, the Goody Choo Shoes, Claire Huxley for so long. You know, I can show a different range. You know, you need me to be crazy, I'll be crazy. You need me to be the great grandma that everybody loves, I'll be that. Yeah. You know, like, so you know, it, you know, if, if Jerry Bruckheimer starts calling me or Michael Bay and say, hey, I need you to, you know, suit up, you know, can you handle a weapon? Hey, if Liam Neeson can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, you know what's funny? I'm waiting, for, I'm waiting for MCU, Kevin Feige, to give her a call and be like, hey, man, we need a, we need a strong <laughs> grandma in the MCU. <laughs> hey, you know, the funny thing is, like, and then we, and we're, and we're segueing away a little bit. You mentioned NCU, right. um, and, and that's another story. So I'll let that be. I'll let that be because we can go off tangent as far as you know. But yeah, so you have the holiday films are out this right. year. You know, you have Come Away with David Oyelowo. You have The Life Ahead, which is on uh, on uh, uh, Netflix with Sophia Loren and this young African kid. I want to say African American. I think he's African. I'm not sure what country. Um, who another gifted individual. You know, um, so you, you have films out there. There are films out there. Also this week, the Gotham Awards made their nominations. It's the first awards of the season yeah. of the Oscar race. Sometimes it has some bearing. Sometimes it doesn't. But nevertheless, some people get recognized. And a shout out goes to Rada Blank, who got nominated twice for a breakthrough director in screenplay. Um, for the 40 year old version. version, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, for the 40 year old version, you also had Nicole Bahari nominated for Best Actress along with its director, Channing Godfrey, this Juneteenth. and then Chadwick Boseman, and the first, or maybe many, got a nomination for Best Actor, posthumous Best Actor nomination for Ma Rainey. So, wow, the, uh, okay, the folks out there must have seen it early in advance because he was the only nominee for that film. You know, uh, okay, so, well, so you see my face. Look, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, we know that we know we know how these early screenings go. Yeah. Wilson, 
who who's seen my Randy's Black Bottom before tonight? So far, I do not know. You know, my point exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, far, uh, best best actor, huh? Mm, you know, yeah, he got nominated. Yeah. Winning is another story. So he, mm. he's in the running. So it's it sets a chain. You never. Here's the thing. I always call the wag the dog thing, where like if one person says something and he has influence, other people take notice. Mm. You know, and, and that's what happens. If, if if that needs to be, Charles. You know, mm. so, but, so, so but, be it. So but, we, we'll, we will. Some of us will find out later tonight. You know, when we see it. You know. I, have some I mean, we're not, nobody is saying that he's not worthy of the Oscar right. nomination. It's that it's that we haven't seen it to verify it or not. No, but no, so, but that's like me saying like, Gary Oldham for Mank. I'm voting for him now. He's a nominee. <laughs> well, they, 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 <laughs> well, you know the funny thing is like you know they know who votes early. They know who needs to see it. You know, so they right. get to these they, they get these movies out to the right voters so that way, hey, see it now so that way we can be in the running. Especially knowing it's the first awards. And right. any buzz is good buzz. I just right. remain skeptical. That's all. I'm like, hmm. Hey, I'm with you until we see. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. All right. So, all right, Wilson, that's good. Um, I'm going to let you go because I know we both doing the same thing. I'm just going to have to do mine a little later after you. Um, I will reach out to you later on because I want to get some reaction, man, because uh, I'm kind of torn on, on this film tonight because – uh, it reminds me a little bit of This Is It. You remember the Michael Jackson? Was, uh, that, that, you remember that? I remember watching that at the screening and yeah. knowing that, you know, when it got toward the end, this is like the last time I'm going to see Michael Jackson doing anything. And I was like, hmm. You know, I, I know how to compartmentalize. Uh -huh. uh, Cordell, and, Cordell. You know, it, it put things, <laughs> it, you know, so when I'm watching a film, I don't think about what happened afterwards. Just watch the film as it. As it is, watch the performance as it is. Don't think about the time period of when it's coming out. Just watch it so that you know you have your opinion besides the outside factors. You know? No, no, but, but, but no, but what I'm saying, the point I'm making, I, I'm doing the same thing, Wilson, but I'm saying when you understand that you're watching the last work of an artist, not to say that that will influence what you well, think. Well, I won't about think about that to after the fact. You know? Oh, okay. I won't think about it. So, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to walk like, I won't think about that after the fact, uh, especially since I had seen all of Chadwick Boseman's theatrical films. Yeah, you know, too. so like, uh, yeah. I, won't, I won't think about that after the fact, you know, um, and then see where it goes. Well, know? that's that's what the factor is in this Oscar nomination is that people are already assuming because this is his last role, you know, we got to consider him posthumously. So, I mean, it may not be worthy, it may be, but it's just. It's hard you know to what? separate. Everybody said hard. that till, you know, till you see it. You know, obviously, they, I won't drop names, but there were some films that came out re recently with the reviews, and one review was so terrible and it has a, a caliber of stars. It's like, uh oh, out of the race. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. No, you're right. Like, I mean, you know, but going right. in there, going in there because of its name and and the value of those names, you automatically oh put it in. But then when you see it, you're like okay. And that happens every year. And it happens every year. I mean, we talk about this. You and I and, and Charles will have conversations early in the year that we're looking forward to this film, this film, this film. And then when you when it comes out, you go, yeah, so much for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happens. You know? All right, Wilson, uh, before we let you go, uh, where can people read the amazing work that you do on a daily basis, my brother? You can find me at blackfilmandtv.com. Look for all news, of, you know, from theater, to film, and TV. On there, same words you use for all the social media outlets. All right, bro. Hey, you take care of yourself, man. I'll reach out to you later on tonight, man. We'll talk. All right. All right. Of course, that is Wilson Morales from Black Film and TV, uh, who shows up with us at the top of every show to kind of give us the recap of what's going on on film. So, Charles, before we move on to our first of two interviews that we're going to do today, let me just say, and I guess I was trying to make a greater point that Wilson is, is much better at doing this than I am. And com the word he used, his Cornell word, compartmentalizing. <laughs> it's a very good word. <laughs> it's a very good word. Um, is that, like I said, I, I remember the experience of watching This Is this is It or This Is Whatever. I mean, it wasn't This Is Us, but This Is It. This Is It. This Is this It. Is it. And I was like, at toward the end, I'm looking at my watch and I was like, heck, man, this is almost over, man. This is it for Michael Jackson, man. 
And I feel like tonight, despite the fact that I'm objective and I understand that I'm watching the performance and watching the film for what it is, I'm also saying earlier, Charles, having the benefit of having seen Ma Rainey's Black Bottom on the stage. So you're right. gonna show it to me on the screen. So I'm like, cool, so I know the story. But you, you are good. people are going to feel some kind of way watching Chadwick Boseman, now knowing what we know about how he was fighting this battle uh, with cancer, how, how he did it in the shadows so heroically, nobody knew. I mean, so you're going to feel some kind of way. I mean, would you agree or is it just the, is that just me? I think it's very human. I don't think it's impossible for you to, uh, even as a critic, to separate the the thought of what you're seeing in this person's last performance from the actual performance. And sometimes uh, you have to go back and watch something a couple times just to be able to separate. Did I really see a good performance, or was it because of the circumstances that I that the uh, that surround this production that that I'm judging it upon or being critical upon? So uh, I, it's not it's it's hard to com com what compartmentalize. Compartmentalize. <laughs> it's, it's hard to do that. Right. But, uh, Sometimes we're called to do that and sometimes we fail. But I think this might be one of those times where I'm, I might have to watch it a couple of times before I can actually give a, an honest opinion upon the movie, well, just because uh, of those circumstances. So if you're just joining us, we're talking about uh, there's going to be a, a screening tonight uh, for critics for My Rainey's Black Bottom. And um, I've been thinking about it all week, like, wow, man, I really want to see this film. And I, it is a lot of buzz and anticipation but you want to savor it along with the Five Bloods and all of the other films that Chadwick Boseman has done. And I had an opportunity to re-watch the, uh, the special ABC. You remember, when, you know, like that Sunday after he passed, uh, they created the special. So I re-watched that this morning. So I'm all in on, on being there emotionally for Chadwick Boseman tonight. But I, I want to see what George C. Wolfe does and how he adapts uh, August Wilson's monumental play and brings it to the big screen. Viola Davis, uh, who won an Oscar for Fences. Um, I'm no, did she did she win or was she nominated? Yeah, she did. I she think won. She, she did. She won. Yes. Yeah, she won. So um, Viola Davis is a is a hell of an actress. Hell of an actress. And, you, and, you have, and so you have a perspective upon this that some of us don't, because a, a lot of us may have not seen the play. Right. And, uh, so you, you, you can do better at com compartmentalizing mm -hmm. your, your emotions, uh, even though you made a big error by going and watch that, that, the, the tribute that they did. Uh, <laughs> there's no way I, it, it makes it harder. I don't think, I don't know what well, were you thinking doing that, but. Well, man, you know, you know what happened and, 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 and I must, I, I, I'm going to say this real quick and then we're going to get on to our interview. I made the mistake earlier this week of um, watching, I, I, you know, we, Charles and I kind of work at the same spot. So I watch lots of movies during the day to help me with my rhythm at work. And I watched Captain America First Avenger, right? Okay. And at the end, of course, you have that final scene with, with Peggy Carter. And I was like, okay, well, let me go check out Agent Carter. So then I binge watched two seasons of Agent Carter. And then when I got to the end of Agent Carter, you know, they always have a recommendation, you know, since you watch this, you know, I said, oh, there's a Chadwick Boseman piece. So I watched the Chadwick Boseman piece and then they were trying to recommend Black Panther. I was like, hey, I'm not doing Black Panther. <laughs> You're going but, down the rabbit hole. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I felt Disney, Disney Plus grabbed me, man. And I couldn't get out. So, but, but let's set this up. Wilson Morales, who just was on our show a couple minutes ago and who was our show correspondent, sat out and did interviews with both Felicia Rashad and David E. Talbert. And up first, we will start with Felicia Rashad. If you have not had an opportunity to see Jingle Jangle, The Christmas Journey, I'm gonna let Felicia Rashad put it in her own words, and then you'll understand where we're going with this. So technology up. Let's see what we got, Charles. Uh, we gonna blow it up. We are going to hit start, and here is Wilson Morales 
from Black Film and TV with Felicia Rashad. Tomorrow's Black Film and TV. Hello, Ms. Rashad, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. You know, obviously. Everything that you look for and the work that you want to do, you know. And this one just has so much joy in it. And, um, and it's my first Christmas project. Really? All this time? No one's ever wanted you to be in a Christmas movie? <laughs> And it's yeah. good. Like, things come when they should and don't when they shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when you get this call and, and you know, you're reading the script and, you know, obviously there's a lot uh, for you to do and not to do because, you know, it's a big ensemble. You know, um, how was working with David and, his, and exploring what he wanted the grandmas to be and in turn telling the story? It was wonderful working with David. He is a great collaborator. He said he's visionary, yes, he's a great creator, and on top of those two things, he's also a great collaborator. And that made it triple fun. Um, because, well, really what we did in the what we did in the studio for narration, that was some of the most, I guess say in this project, that was some of the most intense and specific work that I had to do. With this project. Then there is the outfits, you know. You're not just some old grandmother coming out of her room and talking to her kids about go to sleep and stuff like that. You know, you come out in this outfit that's like, oh, okay, you know, she's well to do and she's telling them a story. You know, uh, when you get on set, and, and granted, I think depending on the film, you never know what kind of outfits they're going to give you to wear. But what did you make of the outfit they gave you? You know, you, you, I had no idea. I had no idea. I knew that the story was beautiful. I knew that that was good. I knew that I would enjoy working with the story from having read it. But when I showed up in England and was brought to the set and took a look at the set, I thought, ooh, okay. And then when I was taken to the wardrobe department and I saw the sketches of all the wardrobe in the, I mean, all of it, okay. And I thought, oh, this is something. And when I went into the fitting room, and there was this gown, this how this uh, this garment, um, I, mm, I was like, I, you, know, you never ask if you can take the thing with you. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> asking, do you ever get this dressed up for your own holidays, Christmas time? Not anymore. No, but she was grand, honey. She's like the rest of the film. The woman is grand. The film is grand. The people are grand. And that's by design. It is grand. You know, there's a moment in there um, where, you know, you may have to work with a little bit of green screen. Uh, how was doing that? Was, that? was that a first for you? Absolutely it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, when the film was offered to me, they were making the final negotiations, right? My agent uh, said to me, well, and you won't have to, and I'm not going to spoil an alert here, you won't have to use the green screen. You won't have to do that. And I asked, why not? Well, we told them that you probably wouldn't want to do that. And I said, well, I think you need to go back and tell them that I do want to do that because that's one of the reasons I want to be in here because I want to do that. <laughs> I tell your people, now you're game for anything, you know? <laughs> After seeing you in, uh, in black boxes, like, oh, she's game. She's just letting it out. You know, we're seeing all sides of you that we didn't see before, you know? Um, you know, th th this, this is a big ensemble. You, and not, there's not, you don't get to interact with everybody. You know, you've worked with some of them uh, before. Uh, and I'm thinking, oh, Felicia and Anika were in for color the girls, but I don't remember if we had any scenes together. And, you know, so there's a number of people you've worked with before. And 
it's just a big set. Was there a moment where the whole cast was together and you got to talk to each other? Yes, for the table read. What has happened? We were together for the table read, and that was quite an adventure too. That was extraordinary because that's where we heard the music. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was amazing. The music was out there, you know. It's like I saw John Debney did the score, but when you hear the songs, and it had that feel of stage like, you know, when you you know, like you know when you're looking at a musical, it's like oh, when are they gonna burst in song? And I could, and knowing David Tauber, and I haven't seen all of his productions on stage, but I could feel like okay, he's he's bringing some of his magic that he's created on stage to screen. You know, uh, and you, you know, you've been a director, you know, you've been in musicals, I remember you in Blue, <laughs> you know. Um, so what was it like when you finally saw the whole product and, you know, you're seeing the music you, you heard before, but you're now seeing it for the first time as a finished product? You want to talk about magic? That is magic. Mm -hmm. That is magic. I, every now and then, Lynn Talbert, who was a producer on this, on this project, would I don't know. The man's mind is so expansive, he creates like that. <laughs> you know, you know, this is the time period where we're getting a lot of Christmas movies, you know, but this one is beyond just the average Christmas movies that you're seeing on, on cable platforms, films. What do you think sets this apart? You know, you can't say you've seen every movie, but you know, in your own vision, in your own mind, like you said, this hasn't been done before. What do you think sets this apart as far as other Christmas stories? Is there a message to get out of this? I, I think that uh, David uh, began, I think it began with David putting the best of what he has known and experienced in life in this story. Those things that are most meaningful to him. And he's carried his grandmother through him into this story because this is what I learned on set, that his grandmother, he was a young boy, his grandmother read to him all the time. Oh. So you have it beginning with the grandmother, when you read to the, you know, this is, this is, you know. And then, and the cultural elements, the artistic and cultural elements, and the designers and, 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 work, and, and workmen, that are on this project that he has worked with, everyone a master in their own field. It's it's unbelievable. It's like, okay, so you've got a collaboration of masters working on this one project. What do you think you're gonna get from that? That's your greatness. Yeah, you know? get that. You know, you know in your life, were you ever read Christmas stories or did you ever read Christmas stories? Or do you think about Chris reading Christmas stories after doing this movie? <laughs> oh, sure. You know, growing up, it was always the night before Christmas and all through the house. <laughs> not the story, not even the clothes. The stockings were hung by the chimney in in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be. Sure, I read to my own children, you know. And uh, yeah, it's, it, this is this 
is what parents do. This is what people do. This is what teachers do. Uh, so reading literature has always been a great part of my own personal journey in life. My mother is a writer. I don't know if you knew that before. So I grew up with that discipline, that art form, because my mother was always writing. Uh -huh. An appreciation for what it means to write, to create. And I have great appreciation for David because he and Lynn had nurtured this project for 22 years. Really? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> he, he wrote the first draft of this 22 years ago. And he's been nurturing this. Imagine this incubation period. Imagine this gestation period, I should call it. Imagine that. It's almost like Forrest's character in the movie, you know, working all these years and looking for that ingredient to finally say, I got it. You know, <laughs> to, to, you know, and everybody has that in them, like, I got an idea, but I'm missing something, you know, and you don't know when it's going to come along. And then all the pieces have to fit in for you to say, let's make it happen now while it's, while the timing is right, you know. So yeah, so like having seen you in Black Box and seeing you in this, what do you want to do next? What, you know, what sort of character would you want to play that's like, that's not the type of roles we would expect you to play? I don't know. <laughs> it's like, hey, you just said right now, your agent was like, oh, she may not want to do this. You know, so they have an idea as to like what you may want to do, but you know, so like, what is it like, let's go off script, let's just do something fun. You're like, hey, you know, you got nothing to lose, you know? Uh, uh, there's, there is always more to do. And the truth of the matter is, if I ever said what it was, I'd probably fall short. Because mm. all I know is I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to expand. I want to continue to create. I want to continue to collaborate with creative people. I want to continue to offer service in this way. And so the way it has unfolded in my career was always in a way that I could never have imagined. I couldn't tell you what the vehicle is going to be. I can't, I don't want to try to put a limit on that or I'll leave something out because the things have been so wonderful, I couldn't have imagined it. So that I just learned to just, okay, what you do, Felicia, is you keep at it, you stay ready, be, stay ready, like they say, David makes men stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Stay <laughs> ready. <laughs> stay ready. Speaking of David makes man, are you coming back for season two? I I had hoped to, but I think uh, I think this pandemic has, you know, it kind of presents some challenges in terms of travel and safety issues. You know, you have to mm -hmm. when, when you have to meet certain conditions for me to be able to do that. But I would love to because I really enjoyed working in that as well. I love tell Terrell Alvin McCraney's work. I absolutely adore the cast of David Meets Men. And I mean the entire cast. What a great company of actors. What an exceptional project that is. You know, before I let you go, the last time we spoke, you had recommended a couple of Asian and Turkish series to, to keep up with. But I looked at it, I think you mentioned Princess something, I forgot what it was. Princess uh, Young. <laughs> yes. Well, I had to look it up. I said, okay, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll figure it out. What would you, you recommend now? Huh? Did you look it up? Did you see it? I, I, I got a clue in. You know, when you watch these series now, because I think it, you, I want to watch it all in its one, like maybe one day as opposed to like day after day after day. You know, well, you'll be able to see it in one day because there's a lot of it in there. Okay, so along with Princess Li Wei Young, I love Eternal Love. Uh -huh. ooh, 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 ooh. That's a beautiful thing. That's that's fantasy in it too, but it's it's just a beautiful production. I love that. Oh, then on the other time. the other end of that spectrum, there's a Turkish series that I like, Yunus Emre. Yunus Emre. Okay, I'll make sure to look out for it. I gotta have the patience to read the subtitles, you know, make sure it's called Fly, <laughs> but we'll make it so. So, hey, keep working. I wanna see you in the next one, maybe some disastrously horror film, you know, that's like, who knows, you know, something totally different, like, oh, she's in it. Let's see what she does now. You know, <laughs> good talk to you, Ms. Rashad. Thank have a good one. Thank Take you. Take care. <laughs>
All right, Charles. Why did you mute? <laughs> you, let me unmute. Uh, let me, I'm trying to get, how do I get my picture back, man? I, 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 I stopped my, my face. I had to hide me while we were doing this. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine, yes. I see you, I, I hear you, you're doing you, well. You see me? I don't see me, but you know, I hid myself from view. Uh, Felicia Rashad, man. I mean, what's up with that, man? We get recommendations, we get, man, I gotta look them shows up. Uh, 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 I, I wanna say my daughter is watching Princess Lee, uh, Leon Way or something like is that. Is it Leon Way? Uh, yeah, I couldn't, I didn't know what she was talking about with that one. I, that one, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out. I was trying to get my recommendations on, writing it down, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So that was hot. I forgot about Black Box. Man, Felicia Rashad. Yeah, I, I, I just watched Black Box again the other night. I, I have a, you know, I don't know. Did I give you a review for that one? <laughs> Go to thefilmgordon.com. I don't know what's up there, but I know it's a lot of reviews on that page right now. Um, yeah, it it was really good to see her in that role as well in Black Box because, you know, we we, we all know Claire Huxtable and it's lovely to see her step outside of that right. range. Even in this movie, as the grandmother, she's the lovable, sweet grandmother. But uh, yeah, she, she's, a, she's an actress who can do it all. Look for her in the next Marvel movie. She'll be a <laughs> star. <laughs> well, you, you know what's funny about that? Is listening to Wilson talking about having the patience to read subtitles. I was like, really, bro? Come on, man. Word. Say word. Word. <laughs> word. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was hot. So, all right. So, that was Felicia Rashad. Uh, our next guy we're going to play, I need to tell a story because uh, I think I found the picture like seven years ago. He had a film called Baggage Claim. And they called me and told me to moderate, uh, you know, going to check out David E. Talbert's film. So they, I jumped in the car. Well, I should just say they, they hired a limousine and took me down to Baltimore. Um, I sat out into the Q&A with David, a. Ta David E. Talbert. Um, we, had, we had an amazing time doing that film with him. Oh. Hold on a second. I think we still may have some stuff going on. Yeah, let's let's knock that out, man, because apparently there's some stuff going on.